Hi friends. So today I'm going to discuss five secrets to get a PhD. And essentially these five topics, if you know of them before you embark on your PhD program, are going to make your PhD much simpler and easier to get than is generally the case. So let's start with these five topics. So the first topic, and this may be somewhat controversial, is that choose a good university but don't necessarily go for the greatest university possible. So for example, if you are looking at different universities in the US, you can think of a good university such as University of Michigan or University of Maryland College Park or Virginia Tech or Georgia Tech. And you can also aspire to some place such as Caltech or MIT as a great university. Now, the problem is that sometime at these so-called great universities, there is an extremely high level of competition right at the coursework stage. And so remember that you will have to keep a certain GPA to be part of the PhD program. This GPA may be 3 out of 4, 3.5 out of 4. And because all the students in the class are very brilliant, the professor is going to have a hard time giving people B and C grades but be sure that the professor is going to give some A, B and C grades because if he does not do it, the dean or the chairman are going to complain about that, that he's too lenient. So unfortunately, professors always grade on the bell curve or some close relative of the bell curve. So keep that in mind that uh, if you go to a very tough and a great university, you not only have difficult courses, you have a very difficult set of written qualifying exams which are essentially used to weed out a lot of so-called normal students. They also have a difficult comprehensive exam and they may even have a very high standard of the problem you choose. So many problems which are actually good problems for doing a PhD may be not considered by such universities. They may think only of great problems. So that's the number one issue is that choose a good university, not necessarily a great university. So next point number two is uh, choose an advisor who writes papers. And this is very important because often what happens is that one student get their admission and scholarship to a good university, they become very complacent. They feel, okay, I have got this scholarship to this good university and now I just have to go there and get my PhD. All the professors must be at equal level. Now all the professors at such universities are good and are well versed in their research domain in their subject and so on but there are some people who are more prolific in terms of writing papers and this helps your case because you are going to need some of these papers to write a good phd dissertations it's much easier to write a phd thesis if you have several good papers which have been written you can then collate these documents and come up with a decent thesis Secondly, if you are going for postdoc or for some faculty position or some position in a national lab or even in companies, they like to see that you have written a few good papers. So keep that in mind that if you work with a PhD supervisor who is regularly writing papers, it will be easier for you to write papers. Also remember that people who are writing papers are all the time getting some new concept about doing new problems and this happens because Whenever you submit a paper to a journal, the referees point out certain lacunas or weaknesses in your paper. And then you can consider these problems to be the problems for your next paper. So that always keeps a pipeline going. Essentially, people who are prolific publishers always have a pipeline of papers for future work and so on. Now, the third issue is that always try to work with a relatively junior faculty, preferably an assistant professor. And this helps you because such a professor is trying to get tenure, trying to get promotion at his university, and therefore is very motivated to write papers, is motivated to graduate you. Actually, such a person often needs a PhD as part of their promotion package so that they can get tenure. So in many cases, such a person will actually help you a lot more than a very senior professor. And therefore, if you have any problems in your experiments, you have some problems in your code, 
this relatively young professor is going to help you out in these problems so in some way actually your phd is also his second phd as the case may be or his third phd so people take much more interest in their second or third or first phd student than in their 35th or 40th phd student so that's something to keep in mind you will get much more help from a junior faculty than you will get from a very senior faculty who may be department chair or dean now the next point is that join a well oiled research lab now many research labs are there throughout the world but some of these labs are well oiled so essentially they have a highly motivated professor leading them they have a relatively large number of students and postdocs so essentially i would say a number like 5 is a minimum once you have more than 5 students or postdocs in a lab you have a kind of critical mass so if you are a phd student you can ask questions to some other phd students and these are very useful if you are struggling with matlab or experiments or latex or template of papers and so on you cannot do all these things by yourself so be careful of a lab where there is only one student and uh, you may have lot of difficulty in getting any help now if the lab has postdocs this is going to help your case because the presence of postdocs means that you have kind of people who can help you if your supervisor is not there all the time so essentially it is very easy to approach postdocs and get help from them you also keep in mind the diversity of the lab are all the people such that they speak the same language is the lab completely chinese or is it um, completely from some other foreign country so what happens in those cases is that there is a large group of students who are speaking their own native language and it becomes hard to be a member of this group and so you cannot get help from this group of people this is also a situation in case there is lot of uh, clustering in terms of gender for example if all the lab people are men and you are a female student it may be more difficult for you to get help in some cases or vice versa so generally a diverse lab in terms of nationality in terms of language in terms of gender in terms of race is a better lab and it's much easier to mix around in such a lab and get help from different type of people now these were some of the key points which i had today and uh, there is uh, one more point which i should point out the number 5 point and that is to keep a track of what happens to the phd students after they leave the lab and how long the students take to complete their phd so generally if a professor is vested in his phd students they are going to put this information up in the web page and they are going to track the progress of their phd students as they leave the lab or university so you should find out whether it is taking 3 years or 5 years for a phd student to graduate or it is one of those labs where students are taking 7 8 9 10 years and also keep in mind how the funding situation of the phd student is there are some labs where the professor goes out of his way to make sure his student has some funding in case uh, the research funding runs out they try to get them some funding from teaching and so on so this piece of information is very important because you want to be funded throughout your tenure you want to get out of the phd program in 3 to 5 years you don't want to become a case study who is working for 9 or 10 years so this is a piece of information you need to get about what's the phd graduation rate are all the students graduated does the professor have the capacity to give different type of problems to different type of students so sometime there is a student who may actually not be suited for experimental work can he figure out a computational problem to give this guy or vice versa so in case there is a well oiled lab there are a large number of problems going on in the lab there are various postdocs in the lab this is always possible so i know of cases where there was a student he was to to told to do some experimental work but this guy was totally computational and so after some time these guys the professor realized that and they switched his problem to a problem in molecular dynamics simulation and he was able to publish several papers and get his phd so go to such a lab where the professor has the resources and the wherewithal to actually give you a new problem in case you are not able to 
figure out the old problem. So that was my take on five secrets to get a PhD position or a PhD degree and uh, I hope these help you in your quest for the doctorate. I will see you soon in a new video. See you then.